back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to sew this beautiful crinoline bubu kaftan with pointed collar and a keyhole as well. So if this is what you want to learn in this class, I'll encourage you to stay till the end of this tutorial. So here I'm making use of two different Ankara piece. So this particular one will be for the bodies and the other one will be for the strip and the collar. So I'm using three and a half yards for the blue Ankara and the part that I'll use for the collar. You can just go ahead and cut out from there. So now this is my three and a half yards and I'm going to put it together on fold. So here I have the first fold. So after the first fold, this is what I have after the first fold. So you can see the upper piece is on fold. Then I'll pick it up from there again and I'm going to fold it again the second time. So after folding it the second time, I'm going to arrange it very well. So here, this is the center front and center back, and this is the shoulder line and the sleeve line. So I'll start to take my vertical measurements right now. So I'm going to place my tape at the shoulder line. And I'm going to take the full length. That is the only vertical line I'm taking. I'll take my full length at 64. So here is 60. And I'm going to mark 60 and add 4 inches to it, making it 64 inches length of my booboo gown. So I'm trying to highlight the line as you can see right here. So the line is highlighted as you can see. So we'll go over to the shoulder right now to take the neckline measurement. So here my neckline measurement is 3 inches because I'm making a collar. And the depth for the back is 1 inch. I'm going to connect the 3 inches by 1 inch of my neckline for the back. Then I'm going to take the measurement of my front neck depth at 3 inches. Then I'm going to connect it 3 by 3. So I'm going to take the measurement of my keyhole. I took my keyhole at 3 inches, at 4 inches because I don't want to expose it. So you can go ahead and take at 3 inches or 4 inches or 5 inches, depending on how you want to expose. So I just connected it to three inches right now as you can see that is my keyhole so after that i'll take my shoulder divide by two which is eight inches i, I will mark then I'm, i'll take my sleeve measurement i'm using the whole of the ankara for my sleeve so i'm going to cut out what i have on the back neckline and then I'm going to trim out the length of my booboo gown as well. So after cutting out, I'm going to open it up as you can see. So I'll be able to separate the back and front before I cut out the front neckline. So I'm going to arrange it very well. So I'll have the front neckline at the center front. So here you can see I'm done arranging. So I'm going to follow the chalk line of my neckline into the keyhole. Then I'm going to cut out my keyhole, as you can see. So here, my neckline is very much ready. So we are going to create a facing for the keyhole. So I'm going to come in with a piece of fabric which measures 4 inches by width and length is 6 inches. So just identify the back of it. So I'm going to place right side to the right side and I'll secure with my pin. So you can see how I'm placing it. Just make sure you place the right side to the right side of the keyhole. And secure with your pin in a way you can sew on top of your pin as well. 
So I'll hold it down with my pin all around. I'll just take my time and arrange that piece of fabric that will serve as my facing. Then I'll go to the machine to stitch at 0 0.5 inch all around. So here I'm done stitching and cleaning up the neckline. Then I'm going to cut out the facing part that is on the keyhole. Just cut it out so you have your keyhole. Then after cutting it out, we are going to make notches on that keyhole. Make sure you make notches so it will be easy for you to turn. After that, I'm going to pick up the fabric right now, turn it to the right side and I'll push all my seams to the facing, the side of the facing because I want to top stitch. Then I'll go ahead and top stitch very closely. So after that, yeah, I will have it fold in nicely. So here I'm done top stitching and I gave it a good press as well. So the keyhole is very much ready. I'm going to take the neckline measurement all around. We'll be using it to draft our collar right away. So here I have 17 inches, but my fab my paper is going to be on full. That is the first thing you need to do. Okay, then you rule a border line on the paper. Now we are going to take the measurement. That, that part has to be on full. I've mentioned it before. So I am using 18 inches because I let her measure the neckline very well and I have 18 inches. So I'll divide it by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9 inches. That is what I'm marking. So just draw a straight line from that 9 inches. So this line measures 1 inch. So I'm going to find the midpoint of that 9 inches. Just divide the midpoint. Then, this is going to be my center back and my center front, and this is my shoulder line. So, I'll go over to the center back and measure one inch, and the shoulder one inch, and connect my line. Then, I'll come to the center front and come up by 0 0.5 inch, and then place slant my ruler. You can see how I'm slanting my ruler from the shoulder to connect to the half an inch. Then from that half an inch, measure another one inch. And slant your ruler diagonally a little bit to complete your collar. So I'll push my collar from that shoulder, my ruler from that shoulder line to follow the exact shape of that collar. Then I'm going to finish up the collar using the inner part of my ruler, as you can see. So this is my collar stand. I'm going to rule another line as well. And I'll follow exactly the center front line. And I'm going to measure 2.5 inches. Then I'll measure 2.5 inches. That part is going to be on full. Then you square your line. So after that, at the folded part, I'll come up by 0 0.5 inch. And then I'll also trace the shoulder line to that color line. I'll place my pattern ruler. You can see how I placed it. Connect the 0 0.5 inch to the midline. So after connecting it that way, the next we are going to do now is to... We are going to come in by one inch from that center front and mark our line. So this is exactly our collar if you are making a normal collar. But because we are making an extended collar, you can see me extend my line. So I am measuring three inches from the upper part of the main collar and place my ruler and, and create the collar. So if you want the color a little more pointy, just go ahead and measure from that main color 4 inches and connect your line. And place your ruler the way I'm placing it to create the color. So actually I'm going to use the point of, I measured now at 4 inches. Okay, so make sure you highlight your lines as well. 
so i'm not using that line again i'm using the four inches line so this is what my color looks like so you can see it's looking very beautiful right here so i'm going to cut out what i have right here for my color stand so i'll keep cutting and i'll follow the curved part of the color that is the center front piece then I'm going to cut what I have on this other color, okay? So after cutting, this is what my color looks like, as you can see right here. So I'm going to cut this color out on fabric. So I've cut out my color on fabric. I also place it on food and added 0.5 inch all around. Then I also have my color stay. I cut my color stay exactly the shape I drafted right now. Both my color stand as well. So I'll place my color on the wrong side. I will, the wrong side of the color. I will place the sticky part of the color stay on it because I'm, I'll be going to my machine now to iron it out nicely. Then for the color stand, I also cut and added my 0 0.5 inch and I cut also exactly my color, my color stay. So I'll place my color stay, which I cut now on the wrong side of the color stand, which I added 0 0.5 inch. So you can see the 0 0.5 inches I added. So I'm done ironing it on my ironing table now. So I'm going to work on the collar right now. So for the collar, I'm going to place right side to right side, secure with my pins all around, and I'm going to stitch as I'm demonstrating, leaving that part open. So I'm done securing with my stitches, you can see. So I'll go to the machine and follow the collar line and stitch at 0 0.5, leaving this part open. So I'm done stitching, you can see how I stitch. So I'll fold in the stitches the way you see me do now. So once you fold it this way, just trim out the excess. Then hold it on that line and start turning it. So this is the best way of turning pointy colors. So I'll just push it in as you can see. Then I'll use my screwdriver or loop turner to bring it out nicely. So I'll just take my time and make create that pointy part of the collar. So I'm done right now. This is what my collar looks like. So I'm going to flip the seams on the part of the lining. The part of the lining, there is no collar stay to it. So I'll top stitch. So I'm done top stitching and I gave it a good press. You can see how beautiful the collar is looking. So this part is still open. So I'm going to so the color stand but before i work on the color stand i have a strip of 24 inches length and 1.5 inch by width so i'm going to use it i'm going to fold it in 0 0.5 0 0.5 fold it again and top stitch so here my strip is ready and I'm going to attach it directly on the collar stand. So you can see how I'm placing it. I'll just place it and top stitch at half an inch. I'll also place the other strip and top stitch at half an inch. So here I'm done top stitching. The next I'll do now is to bring back, put it together and get your midpoint first. So get the midpoint of the collar stand. So after getting the midpoint, you are also going to fold the collar itself into two and get the midpoint. Then I'm going to place the midpoint of the collar right now. So the part that has the collar stay, make sure it stays on the collar stand with the collar stay. So I'll just secure it with my pin from there. And I'll, from that center point, I'll pin all around to the end as you can see 
So after that, I'm going to get my color stand that does not have the color stay. Place the right side now to the right side and pin it all around. So make sure you put in the strip before you stitch so you don't stitch on top of it. So I'm going to secure with my pin from that point all around, making sure I match them appropriately before I stitch. So I'll go over to the machine and sew at half an inch. I will follow, always follow the color shape, the color stand shape, just sew behind it like that because we added 0 0.5 inch. So after, I'll go over and sew now. So after sewing, I'll turn it to the right side as you can see. Then I'll go ahead and give it a good press. So you can see what my color looks like and it's looking very, very beautiful. So I'll keep the color now and we'll go back to go back to the dress to sew the sides of the dress that has the crinoline. So from the shoulder, just take your measurement. You remember we took our measurement at 64 inches. So just go ahead and take your desired measurement. So this 64 inches I have is on fold. So for that reason, I'm going to multiply it by two before I cut out my strip. So I've cut out my strip, but I placed it on fold and measured the 64 inches. So the width of this my strip, the width of this strip, the length is 64 inches on fold. And the width measures four and half. I'll just make a notch first on that part. Then the width measures four and half. So I'll just go ahead and place it at the shoulder line. The part I notched, I'll place it at the shoulder line and secure with my pin from there to the end of the hem. So now on my machine, I want to start sewing from the hem after securing with my pin. I have my three inches crinoline to sew to the side of this dress. So I'm going to place my crinoline. Of course, you know how to sew your crinoline. It's the same method I'm using right here. My crinoline is three inches. I'll place it from the hem and I'm going to sew 0 0.5 inch all around. I'm going to sew 0 0.5 inch from that point to the other end. So you can see me sewing right there. So I'll sew it till I get to the end, to the other end of the of this caftan. So I'm done sewing now. I'm going to cut out the excess crinoline at the end right there. So the next step I'm going to take now is to top stitch. So I'll go over where I started again and I'll flip all my seams to the part of the crinoline. So it relaxes nice and flat for us. So I'm going to top stitch right on top of the stitches, the same line I flipped. So it will carry the weight of the crinoline to the red and cara part. So at the end of the day, it folds nice and good for us. So I'm going to top stitch till I get to the end right now. So I'm done top stitching, so I'll just flip the red piece inside the Ankara part now. So make sure you relax it very, very well. You can see me relaxing it, then fold 0 0.5 inch in and secure with your pin. So I will advise you to take your time to pin and pin and pin before you go over to top stitch. So I'll fold in 0 0.5 inch. You can also iron out the 0 0.5 inch and keep it ready. Just iron one side 0 0.5 inch. So by the time you start pinning, it will be easy for you. So I'm pinning in a way I can stitch. So I'll go over to the machine and stitch right away. So after folding, I have three and a half inches. Okay, three and a half inches. So I'll confirm that I have the strip at three and a half inches before I top stitch. So here you can see me top stitching and I'm still top stitching from the hem. So I'll keep top stitching as you can see and I'll take it from there. I'll top stitch and as I'm top stitching you can see me relaxing the 
red and cara parts okay so make sure it's not folding or squeezing anywhere so just keep on folding in your 0 0.5 inch till you top stitch from one end to the other very very nicely so you can also use crinoline a bigger size of crinoline from three inches so depending on the width of your strip anyway so here i'm done and i gave it a good press don't forget to give it a good press so it has a neat and beautiful finishing so the dress is ready right now we are going to sew the collar right away so the collar now i will put it together and get the center back line i'm going to create a notch at the center back so that is what I'm trying to do on the neckline. Make a notch at the center back. So after making that notch, you bring in your collar and place the part that is top stitch. You can see how I'm lifting it right now. So put it together, the collar stand together, make a notch, always make a notch of the center back so i'm going to pick it up you can see how i'm picking it and i will sew 0 0.5 all around so here i'm done sewing 0 0.5 so i will go ahead and fold in 0 0.5 inch on the other part of the collar and top stitch very close but i'll advise you first fold in the center back area so I will just go over to the center back first and pin it to the dress, okay, covering the seam allowance. Then from there, I can start pinning, okay. So always make sure you pin from the center back. So I'm going to sew now. So here, my collar is ready and the dress is ready. I'm trying to tie my strip. I really love this dress anyway. So the next we are going to do now is to shape this dress. So to shape this dress, it's just a simple butterfly. So, so that is my midpoint right now. So from that center front, I'm going to take my measurements, divide by four. So I'm taking my vertical measurements first. So I will take the first one at 12 inches. That is my sleeve opening. Then the next one I'm going to take is my waist line at 17 my hip line at 29 and these are the vertical measurements required so from that center front place your tape on the 12 inches line and measure your bust circumference divide by four me I, for me i have 10 inches i'll add two inches to it on the waist my waist circumference divide by four after marking it add two inches to it for ease then on the hip, I'm going to, I will first connect the bust to the waist. And then I'll go over to the hip. I'm going to take the measurement of my hip line at 29 and highlight the line. From the center front, I place my tape and I'm going to measure my hip divide by 4. I have 12 inches, I'll add 2 inches to it. So I'm going to connect the shape of my hip from the waistline so this is just a simple butterfly dress i'm trying to shape in right here so from the center front i'm going to take everything i have on the hip line and take it to the hem line then i will mark it and add one inch to it too because so it will be out it will be easy for me to walk okay so you actually need to add three inches to your hip uh, circumference divided by four so you'll be able to walk so just add one inch there and connect to the hip line so i'm going to repeat the same exercise on the other side then i'll secure this side with my pins at these strategic points the 12 inches line waist and hip line then i'll stitch from the 12 inches to the hem I'll repeat the same exercise on the other side. So here I'm done stitching. This is what I have. And my dress is beautiful and very ready. So I believe you learned a lot from this tutorial once again. 
So if you have not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Please kindly subscribe, like this video and share to family and friends and see you in the next class. Bye.